Hello and welcome back. I've got another Commodore 64 on the bench. And this one comes to me from a gentleman I met a few weeks back. And in the course of conversation, he mentioned to me that uh, he had a Commodore 64. And I said, hey, I like to refurbish Commodore 64s. He said, well, I'd like mine to work, but when I turn on the screen's all flickery. All the characters are flickery and I can't use it. I said, well, why don't you give it to me and I'll take a look at it, see if I can help you out. So here it is. On the outside, it's in great condition. Um, yellowed a little bit, not a big deal. Uh, keyboard's a bit dusty, but all in all, cosmetically, it looks pretty good. So it's been taken care of, for sure, compared to other computers that I've been working with, especially the one from the previous video, if you recall. I'm going to plug the computer into my 1701 monitor, power it up, and see what we see. Right, so the computer's all plugged in, and I'm going to turn it on and see what's going on. Here we go. Yeah, that is an icky flicky display, for sure. Uh, I'm also seeing flashes of color, mainly orange. So... My immediate thought is there's a problem with the PLA. And as a second thought, there could be something with color RAM ICs as well. I'm not sure. Well, the good news is at least it turns on. So now I'm going to plug in my Commodore 64 diagnostic cartridge and see if that points to anything in particular. Okay, back again. I've got the diagnostic cartridge plugged in, and I'm going to turn on the computer and uh, see what it says. Here we go. Okay, running tests. Initial few tests look okay, but we're waiting to see if the PLA test fails. And yes, it does. The PLA tests as bad as suspected. But interestingly, other tests have returned no result value at all. Uh, the color RAM, for instance, is showing just a blank result, and so is the CPU, the CIA chips, the VIC chip, and even the SID. And every one of the 4164 RAM chips are showing either a blank test result or a bad test result. Now, important note, we can't take this diagnostic information at face value. Because we suspect the problem is with the PLA, we have to consider some other factors. The PLA, or Programmable Logic Array chip, is the traffic cop of the Commodore 64 motherboard. All data traffic, even from the CPU, is managed through the PLA chip. So if this chip is defective in some way, other chips might not be able to function correctly and are going to return false bad values here in the diagnostic and these chips might not be defective at all. So the next thing to do is to replace this bad PLA with a known working one and then rerun the diagnostic and see what changes there are. And it looks like we have the same motherboard assembly number as the previous video as well. 250425. And what do we like about this assembly number? All the major chips are socketed, making life a lot easier for us. So here's the suspect PLA chip we're interested in. I'm going to pull it out, pop in a known working one, and hopefully that fixes our problem. Well, that came out easily, almost too easily. Right, so the test PLA is in place, and once again, we're going to turn it on. Ta-da! Fixed. Yet another easy fix. I'm locking out with the easy fixes lately. Let's hope it stays that way. 
Okay, we're going to run the diagnostic test again with the replacement PLA in and see how it fares. Excellent. So now this time everything is passing and no problems at all, it looks like. After I posted my last video, I had a Twitter comment from somebody that said, well, at least you didn't have to do a lot of probing. And I thought to myself, well, that's good because I don't want to have to do a lot of probing if I don't have to. I repair Commodore computers trying to use a general troubleshooting methodology. Most of the computers I've come across have only one or two failed chips that I can identify using the Commodore diagnostic cartridge and test harness along with the Commodore diagnostic and troubleshooting manual. Although I have test equipment like an oscilloscope, logic probe, uh, even a current tracer, which I still haven't mastered, sitting in the wings, I find the best frontline tools for me are the paper tools. And by that I mean all the great Commodore repair documentation that has been collected and shared by uh, repair technicians and Commodore aficionados since the early days of Commodore 8-bit computers. One of the most useful Commodore 64, VIC-20, C-128 troubleshooting reference collections is all the documentation prepared by legendary Commodore repair guru Ray Carlson. Ray has all kinds of diagnosis and repair info posted on his website. I'll include a link below. And one of the most useful of Ray's reference collections are the chips versus common symptoms documents. I'm showing the Commodore 64 document here. And what's great about this paper tool is that it lists all the chips found on a Commodore 64 mainboard and includes any associated symptoms identifying that chip as defective in some way. This chip versus symptom information alone is an invaluable tool that all Commodore repair enthusiasts should be using. Maybe it would be a good idea to actually do another video dedicated to all the paper tools out there. Ray, if you happen to see this video, thank you very much from me, and I'm sure a lot of other people as well. And back to the task at hand. Now that we've fixed the primary issue, which was the bad PLA, in further testing I did notice that some of the keys aren't making contact when pressed. This is an easy fix. Um, we're going to take apart the upper section of the keyboard, remove the keyboard PCB itself, pop off all the keys, clean those, and likely have to clean oxidation off the contacts from the keyboard PCB itself. So I'm going to take this apart now and we'll get started with that. Okay, we're looking at the underside of the upper case section where the keyboard is attached and we have to remove all of these screws including all 23 of these tiny screws which will allow us to take everything apart get access to the keys themselves and the PCB. And we also have to desolder the two connections to the shift lock key so we can slide those wires through the PCB in order to take it apart. And now with all the screws removed I'm able to separate the mechanical portion and gain access to the keyboard PCB itself. It is very clean looking, however the contact pads do have a yellowy tarnish that can be removed with my trusty old typewriter ink eraser and a little bit of scrubbing. Nice and shiny. And now the fun part, remove each and every key by gently prying them off with even force from the bottom. I use two screwdrivers and patience. Up. Oops, I just removed the run stop button and had a wee incident. A piece is broken off. This plastic tends to get a little bit brittle after 30 plus years, but fear not, we have a fix. Okay, I've done an initial repair on our broken key. And you can see here I've added back the broken piece. I just tacked it in with a little bit of super glue. But now I'm going to use this UV curable liquid plastic or liquid rubber that comes in this little pen. And I apply it down the sides to form a new reinforcement layer. 
and you just have to be careful and make sure that you get a nice even coat. Now we take our little UV LED, shine it on our liquid, and in about five or 10 seconds, it's completely hard. And that should do it. Okay, so now you can see there is a brand new protective layer over the cracked and broken part, and that should uh, stay strong for a long time. Better than the dentist. Okay, so skipping ahead, I've washed all the plastic parts of the keyboard in warm water with a small amount of dish soap and then rinsed everything well. I'm now letting them dry completely and I'll be able to reassemble everything. You can see that the uh, plastic base has turned out really nice, very clean both sides. All that dust contamination is gone. And again, once everything's dry, I will assemble it back together. And the only thing I didn't cover in this video is the removal of the red power LED and its wire lead. It's a bit of a finicky pain in the butt. I'm thinking about making some mini videos to cover things like that. Okay, the keyboard assembly has been thoroughly cleaned and put back together. And now all we have to do is reattach it all to the computer. Okay, all done. And I think that's it. Another happy ending for another Commodore 64. And it's time to get this one back to its owner. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please take the time to rate it, and comments are always appreciated. Thanks very much for watching, and thanks for your time. See you soon.